In this episode, we continue the elevators of the RV7A, pieces that have proved to be the most challenging and also the most rewarding to date. We'll see how close to completion we can get the elevators and with that, the entire tail section of the airplane. Similar to the rudder, the elevators contain balanced tabs and weights seen here. There's also the added technicality of an electronically actuated trim tab and the difficulty of rolled leading edges. All these complexities make for a more demanding build. Weldments are prefabricated, welded, and powder coated pieces of the kit. Because of the heat treating weldments are subjected to, they often won't fit the CNC produced pieces perfectly. The weldment seen here creates the control horn on the elevator and fit pretty well. Snug, but well. Here you'll catch me reattaching the piece I was a little too eager to set into place before. This still isn't problem free and astute viewers may see an issue that I must deal with a little bit later. This isn't my least favorite operation in this whole thing, not by a long shot. It's not my favorite either. I mentioned before the boards used to make the trailing edge bend. For what it's worth, it made a pretty clean bend across the trailing edge.
checking to see if I've bent that trailing edge enough. And I haven't, you can tell because there's a little gap down here. It should be perfectly flat. Which is a little bit of a bummer. But it's not too late. I just wish I didn't have to. Okay, uh, this is pretty cool. It's almost time to take all the Clecos out and, and do the, the nitty gritty, the deburring, the priming, dimpling, um, all the scrubbing. But before that, I wanted to have some fun. I wanted to mock it up. I wanted to look at the scale of the whole thing. These are huge. The parts are primed. Primer came out really good. I've been doing a better job of cleaning the gun and it shows in 
the resulting primer jobs afterward. Um, now, because we're doing things a bit differently, a bit backwards from before, uh, it's time to dimple. So I'm gonna get started with dimpling some of the uh, larger pieces for the counterbalance and then switch it over to the normal size dimple. See if we can't get all these pieces dimpled so we can rib it. <clears throat> I've set some rivets and I'm getting eager, so I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna squish some rivets for a, a, a quick second here. The difficulty here is that I had to sort of assemble the squeezer around the ribs because of the deep reach needed. This meant that I couldn't easily remove the squeezer between rivets, hence the awkward workflow. If I had to do this piece over, I would have waited until the ribs were attached to the spar to rivet them together despite the instructions dictating otherwise. Doing so now meant I had to buck the rivets that held this piece to the spar rather than being able to squeeze them. Switching my yoke out. 
hit again for how I think this might go down. I'm going to try the no hole yolk here. It's a minimal clearance yolk that I think we'll be able to get in and set these sort of hidden rivets that we've been working around. Let's see if it works. Uh, the dimpling process has really distorted the skins. You can see the before and after here. Um, it's not a big deal. I've seen it before, just not to this degree. I've heard the horror stories about this stuff. It uh, it doesn't disappoint. The smell is really, it's unlike your normal epoxy or two part glue. It's got a hint of like burning rubber in there. Great, now it's on my hand. Their little popsicle stick broke right off the bat. That just kind of speaks to how thick it is. I was just gonna mix it on this plastic or paper bag because I was expecting something more like epoxy. I immediately regret my decision to try and mix it on this bag. Again, this is like hot chewing gum. So, lesson learned there. Well, there's more on my hand. This will be a learning experience for sure. Hopefully nobody ever gets to look down in here. All right, well that's all of them. If you're still enjoying these videos, please give me the old thumbs up. It fills me with joy and helps me sleep at night. And if you haven't already, please subscribe.
Well that marks the majority of the work for the right elevator and much of the prep for the left. I'm excited to assemble the left elevator next, which includes the trim tab and related mechanics. However, after that will come rolling the leading edges of both of these pieces, which I'm already dreading. Join me next time for that and more on Ryan Flies. <laughs>